it's a high RPI game. You had, you, did they go through their, the way they were pitching, the way they did their land, the way you thought they were? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I warned our team of this yesterday, which maybe that was too much for them. Probably shouldn't have said a word. Uh, I don't know if today's college player pays attention to the value of every game, and I tried to warn them of it. Um, number one, uh, UTSA is really good. Like, they're really good. That's a, that's a two seed in a regional that can win a regional and go to the College World Series. That's the first thing. And then they had two games on Thursday and didn't play again. And I've been in that scenario. I've been a Mountain West Conference school and got some rain outs, and all of a sudden you get the Big 12 or the SEC school on Tuesday night, and you got your Sunday starter, and you got your best relievers ready to go, and you got your closer who's awesome. We knew we cannot get to the eighth inning down because that guy might pitch in the big leagues. And the game went perfectly for them, um, and we couldn't match it. We couldn't match it on the mound early. I thought we saw we had some. There were some positives about some of the right-handers that haven't pitched much that came out. Stewart, Warwick, Lambert, I thought were solid. Uh, Dillard made some nice pitches and made a really nice play. Um, Ashenback's allowed to have a bad day. I mean, the guy saved us nine million times. Um, so, you know, that doesn't, you know, I'm not worried about that guy. Uh, but you have to give every ounce of credit to UTSA. <laughs> you get out, hit 13 to four until the eighth inning. They hadn't given up a free base the whole game. They walked the leadoff hitter of the eighth and the leadoff hitter of the ninth. It was the only free bases, right? Well, and then they had the wild pitch, so that's two more. Um, but, you know, we didn't give up that many free bases, but they got the hits. You know, they got the – did Taylor get a two-out hit? Uh, and then the, the guy down at the bottom of the order got the, the, uh, the, the double down the right field line. I think that was with two outs, I think. Um, so, they got the time – I mean, they just beat us in every phase. So, way more concerned about how we – respond and play on Thursday, then this is over with. It's over with. You mentioned, uh, uh, you know, Oshenbeck deserves to have a day, uh, you know, a bad day. How much does the starting pitching need to allow Oshenbeck and or the hitters to, to not have a, a good day because they've been, you know, carrying it for the most of the time? Who? The starting pitching, how much does they need to be able to allow some yeah. guys to have it on a good day? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice not to have to pitch Oshenbeck twice in a weekend. Um, but I don't think we did this past weekend. He just pitched on uh, – Pitch behind Detmer. Um, Evan's actually a little bit better when he gets to pitch. Uh, I think there's something to him and SEC hitters that don't see, you know, the soft lefties as much. Um, and that's why I'm not, you know, some people have asked me, can he be a starting pitcher? I think, there, I think part of Evan's effectiveness is who he follows. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so following Detmer or following somebody with something more on the ball is what is part of his effectiveness. Um, but he just got some balls up. I mean, two-strike breaking ball, home run. I, I don't know where the ball was. He walked two guys. Just, you know, he had a bad night. You mentioned Dillard. Uh, I believe you brought him in to go against their, their 400 hitter, and that was good. Struck him out pretty, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, well, the numbers, you know, it's, it's 470 from the right side and two-something from the – I'm sorry, 470 from the left and 270 something from the right, 260 something from the right. So, and Valdez has been a pain in my rear end since for the last two or three years since he was at Baylor. So, I'm very uh, aware of what a really good player he is. Um, changed the lineup a little bit today, Werner. He's, he was at the leadoff spot for a lot, for a lot of time last season. Yeah, yeah, just that, to play around with that. yeah. That didn't turn out so great. Uh, yeah, just trying to find. I'm just trying to. Mix it up a little bit and see if we can't get the guys who've been hitting with runners in scoring position up with runners in scoring position more, you know, if you know what I'm saying. Um, that didn't turn out the greatest. Try to, you know, drop Boast a little bit and give him a chance to maybe see some things instead of hitting in the first inning. Um, so, yeah, who knows? I mean, that probably won't do that again. But uh, it was just taking a, taking a shot at it and trying to get Trevor, Trevor going too, sometimes leading off the game. It's more of a clear mind, and guy can just get up there and go to work. You mentioned the warning on Friday or Monday. Sorry about that. What was kind of the mindset in practice coming off the day? It was great. Right yeah, now? yeah. I mean, we had good practice yesterday. Really good practice. Um, and then I ended practice with that conversation, and so that didn't work out great. We probably won't do that again. But these guys just know that there has to be a sense of urgency to play. Like every, I mean, it's time to go. 
it's time to go. You know, we, we screwed around, it's, you know, Portland, Lamar, um, UTSA is a way better team than those teams. I mean, that's a, that's, that, that's a regional team. I mean, that's a regional team. Um, but we, you know, I'm not saying we have to be perfect the rest of the season, but we don't have a whole lot of room for error if we want to achieve the goals that this program has. A couple more if you got, guys. Thank you. All right.